night of December 2nd to December 3rd in 1984, the residents of Bhopal, a city in central India, became victims to what is known as the world's worst industrial accident. A methyl isocyanate storage tank of a Union Carbide Pesticide Factory exploded and released a cloud of deadly gas into the surrounding residential area. More than 3,000 people died in a single night and about 20,000 more in the years to follow. Today, the survivors and their children suffer from the aftermath of the disaster. 150,000 survivors are estimated to suffer from chronic illness. The birth defect rate is seven times higher than across India, and respiratory problems and cancer are common in Bhopal's hospitals. <laughs> on December 2, 2006, people gathered on Boston Common to commemorate the event and to support the victims in their ongoing fight for justice. The biggest tragedy within Bhopal's sad history is that 22 years later, due to a number of factors from government corruption and corporate greed to lack of international laws and regulations, those responsible remain evasive. 22,000 people are dead! And nobody is responsible? I'm sorry, that is not acceptable. To date, the site remains a toxic wasteland, local drinking water is contaminated, and many victims are yet to receive adequate compensation. A settlement reached by Union Carbide and the Indian government in 1989 provided an insulting $450 million for the victims, much of which was not even released until 2004. We have records from Union Carbide's internal documents showing that they did not follow safety so this wasn't just some accident that happened to them that they suddenly were stuck with bills for. They were cutting corners in order to make money. In 2001, Union Carbide was purchased by Dow Chemical, which now rejects any financial responsibility based on the 1989 settlement. However, the International Coalition for Justice in Bhopal claims that the environmental devastation was not addressed in the settlement, and therefore Dow Chemical remains liable. Furthermore, there are outstanding criminal charges of culpable homicide against Union Carbide and its former CEO, Warren Anderson, who to date have refused to face trial at the Indian court. On December 3rd, MIT chapters of the Association for India's Development and Amnesty International hosted a screening of the BBC movie One Night in Bhopal. Kumkum Madwal, who was featured in the film, spoke at the event. She herself is a Bhopal survivor and had worked for Union Carbide as a medical officer, but quit her job before the disaster due to safety conditions at the factory. I think the first thing that set me going was the dust exposure. This was a long time ago when there was a temic plant and there was a formulation plant with silica. Oh, I couldn't bear the silica dust in that whole formulation plant. And I went on and on about mouthpieces and I did x-rays looking for silicosis, a disease called silicosis. That was the first thing that frustrated me. The second thing was a carbon tetrachloride leak from a pan filter in which the whole shift was jaundiced. That was my second frustration. With the carbon tetrachloride leak, I went up to the management and I, and I told them this is not gonna happen. I mean, this is like a cloud of carbon tetrachloride in the sky. And then they threw me out of the board meetings and I was said that I create panic amongst them. So then I was not allowed to speak to the board. I had to speak to the safety officer who spoke to the safety manager who spoke to the works manager. And the works manager was incredibly uh, profit-oriented man who was not a chemical engineer. So there were lots and lots of situations like that, you know, one after the other, after the other. I said, I'm not going anywhere with this company, and this is it. And then I started studying. I left the company and I joined medicine department and I started doing my residency in, 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 in internal medicine. What drives you to continue to speak out after all of these years? I was very frightened for 20 years. Let me tell you that I did not speak out for 20 years. The first time I spoke about this was to the BBC and um, it was such an overwhelming experience and I was such a young girl. I was rather 
uh, scared and it, I literally left the country after that incident. I worked in Dubai and I just didn't want to go back there. I was frightened and totally shaken by this experience. When you first spoke to the BBC, was there a repercussion from Union Carbide or anyone else? I don't think so. I think I, I have not. I have nothing against anybody. It's the lessons that we have learned from this disaster. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about public health. I'm talking about prevention. I'm talking about. Um, uh, to, to, I want to analyze what happened. Something went horribly wrong, and it was a, it was a mixture of of the host country as well as the multinational, and it was the two together that made this thing, as, as I call it, a perfect storm. What would you recommend to people who want to get involved? What's the most important thing they can do? I think the most imminent thing is to clean up the site. It's amazing that that dilapidated factory is still there uh, and that that whole area has to be cleaned out. That's the first thing. And the second thing is the rehabilitation of the children of the people who died to open up technical schools, colleges, teach them skills. Uh, and, and that is the best way to help them. Health comes with, uh, with uh, uh, occupation. If you have a job to do, you have a certain income, uh, uh, then you can afford good health.